willing to to go to a sort of a, an Occupy Melbourne situation where uh, they're carried out forcibly? I don't I don't think we'll get to that. To be perfectly honest, it's a it's a different situation. Uh, as I say, though, this there are vulnerable people there now. Some have already left. They've they've turned over already, um, and it, it, I'd rather help those people who need to be in a home to get into a home and to get the health services. Yeah, but they that's need. been offered, and they don't want it. Yeah, but I think you know you're dealing with a very difficult, vulnerable group here. Um, some of whom have been homeless for a long time. So, look, as I say, I'm taking the advice from our service providers who are so good in working with people who are vulnerable and homeless. But at some point, we're going to have to say, look, you know, we, we can let you protest there, but you can't camp there. Do you and, think it's been hijacked? Uh, look, some of the elements, yes. I, I, I read um, one of the sort of leaders who'd actually left it because he woke up one morning to find a whole lot of people there that he didn't recognise and made him feel unsafe. So as these things do, it tends to have morphed, and, and that's one of our difficulties in engaging with them. The people there don't remain the same. Yes, I heard during our news at uh, 9 o'clock, one of the organisers of it, Yasmin, in fact, who was the, the spokesperson for the group, I spoke to her in the week, she's talking about, uh, well, they don't want to move. Still protesting. Um, we've had some new people come last night. I mean, they're just uh, more of the homeless community, just uh, uh, throwing in some more support. More support. So she thinks well, it's growing. But look, you know, instead of protesting about homelessness, how about not being homeless? Because, you know, isn't that the best answer to homelessness? Not be homeless. And that's what's being offered at the moment. But I think here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand, Neil, about homelessness. It is very complex. And, you know, it, mental illness, substance abuse, family violence, housing affordability, you know, trauma in one life. There might be 160 rough sleepers out there, but this activity goes on the whole time. You know, the 160 who are out there at the moment are not the same 160 who were sleeping rough two years ago. And even if I had sort of 160 houses right now and every one of those rough sleepers went into a house, the day after tomorrow I'd have more homeless people there. That's the nature of this problem. But there's a form of, intim of extortion, intimidation here. We, we all have, most of us have good hearts. We don't yeah, want to see yeah. these people suffer. We want to no. try to help them. Correct. We try, we try to help them. They say, nah, stick it, and, we, and dig in and shout at us. Yeah. And in the, in, the, in the same time, they're damaging our city. It, it's a sort of uh, moral extortion. It, it is. It's a kind of blackmail. Uh, we're very vulnerable, so, you know, you can't touch us. The reality is if they're protesting, homeless or not, well, they'll be treated exactly the same as anybody else no, who was protesting there. No, but they're not there. being. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have been uh, allowed to camp there this long. Uh, look, you know, we, there were issues to begin with. As I say, we're moving to a, a different regime now. Um, I'm still hopeful that we can resolve it. I, I don't want to be throwing homeless people out of City Square. I want to help them, you know, help their health needs, help them, you know, get a roof over their heads, help them on a pathway out of homelessness. I, I think for the first time in, in my time in public life, I... I I am more hopeful about homelessness in the sense that if their if their purpose was to give attention to this problem and, and to force action from government, then job done.